Well, hello everyone. It's Jeanette Camping here, and on behalf of Henry Stewart Events, I'd like to welcome you to our latest webinar, Powerful and Easy Ways to Use Rights Management for Your Assets Within Adobe and Microsoft Creative Tools. We're delighted to have a global audience of 300 attendees registered today. At any time during the presentation, I'll be able to post your questions in the Q&A tab, and we'll answer them at the end. And we'll be following up with everyone after the presentation with the recording of the webinar. Now I'd like to introduce Andreas Michalski from CI Hub. Thank you, Andreas, and over to you. Hello, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Jenny, for, um, for doing the introduction. It's really great to be here again. Uh, it's always a real pleasure um, to have the opportunity for such a big audience to talk about CI Hub and uh, things we have uh, we we have planned and what we're doing today. It's uh, my 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 very special pleasure um, to have Greg uh, and Devi uh, in that presentation, and we together want to show you um, how rights management should be today. Um, and how we believe that we can make the life of everybody who's working with creative assets much easier than it was before. But to start with, let me just give you a short overview um, on CI Hub and maybe on, uh, on what we do and how we, how we, let me, sorry for, it's not, the, um, and what, what CI Hub means. Um, with CI Hub, uh, and you may have come across that already, uh, we at CI Hub believe that um, working with assets should be the most easy thing within the creative process. So we have built a plugin platform that connects to all of your Adobe products and um, your Microsoft products, and you can get access to every asset you need wherever it is. Using assets should be as easy as assets at, at your fingertips. And that's why we have really specialized in only developing these plugins and bring these plugins to everybody within the creative process. Why do we do that? Um, we have experienced the last 20 years that uh, working with assets is, is, is one of the key things for everyone in, in, in the agency and in the creative department. But um, all of the plugins you can get in the world is these are just plugins developed by a specific vendor to access his asset. But the world is more complex than just accessing the data from one asset store. Sure, we all know and we all believe that uh, we should all have a single source of truth and we should have one repository. But if you're working in an agency and you're working for 10 customers, you have to deal with 10 different truths. And with our plugin, we, we thought it should be really easy to work with these different, with these 10 different silos. And it's not just connecting your assets in a DAM system. In the same way, we believe that you should access your DAM system, your PIM system, your ERP system. And when you need data from that within your creative process, you should just click on that and do a drag and drop and then use that, asset, um, use that asset within your creative work. And it's regardless, and uh, we as CI have support already, InDesign, Photoshop, Illustrator, Premiere Pro, After Effects, uh, PowerPoint, uh, Word, Excel, Outlook. We're working on a, on a, on a lot more systems. Um, uh, and this, is, this, this makes it really, really easy. The product is built in a way that the installation is just one click, and we deliver functionalities for everybody involved in media creation, from the core uh, creative, who's really the, the, the most professional guy using every functionality within his uh, in copy or uh, within his uh, illustrator um, or in design, to people in the sales organization or in the marketing organization wanting to create um brand compliant powerpoints with the right with the right asset so we bridge the whole gap for everybody on that and the plugin is is really easy to use and uh, you will see that in in a couple of seconds 
To make that easy, our platform is already connecting to all of these different um, storages that can be DAM systems, PIM systems, cloud storage systems. And the amazing thing with the iHub is you don't have to make a decision when you buy the product. You can just connect to each of these systems whenever you need it, and you can do it simultaneously. That makes it really easy uh, in the process. So you can, you can store your assets in your Dropbox and share it with colleagues. You can purchase assets and search for stock assets in Getty Images or Shutterstock. And then you can share it with your customer on a Google Drive. That's all within one system. But after we have now these almost 40 connections, um, we have thought, wouldn't it be cool and wouldn't it be a very, very powerful thing if we would also add services on top of all of these connections? And this is something we would like, I would like to show you um, today together with Greg and Debbie from Fidel is the digital rights management for all the assets you're using in your process. This is one thing which takes a lot of time as we got told from, from some of our customers already. You have to check if all of these assets are really usable, if you can use them in a certain, in a certain situation, in a certain country. And um, it's a manual process often done after you have done your creative and then you see, oh, I can't use that asset because I'm missing the rights. We believe it would be great to add services with, into the CI Hub product and deliver the best in class functionality right at the click onto your, onto your asset. Um, here's a short slide from one of our partners, Ativo Consulting, talking about the importance of copyright and digital rights management within the process. And as we have integrated that into our product, I would love to hand over to Greg and talk about uh, the rights management integrated in the process as I have, I'm not a specialist in that and uh, it's a real honor to have you, to have you in that webinar. I don't want to spend more more time on the theoretics, Greg. It's a pleasure to have you here. Share your wisdom. Thank you so much, Andy. It's it's great to be here with you today, um, and uh, very very excited to be sharing with the the crowd that's uh, with us today um, our new solution that brings rights management uh, into CI Hub and therefore into your creative tools um, for marketers. Um, at Fidel, we focus on digital rights management and solutions to help companies manage the, the digital rights, uh, the rights associated with their digital content. Uh, and the reason we do that is uh, enumerated on this slide here. Uh, and that's because you can see the complexity of the digital assets that most people are dealing with. And it can re be a real nightmare to try and decipher the actual rights for any particular piece of content. Uh, so even if you just take a single image, one single image might have multiple talent involved in it. So you could have multiple agreements from models or actors that have different rights that are granted as far as territories that you can use their image in uh, or different distribution channels that you can publish that asset to or different time frames or windows that you can or can't use that asset. Uh, then in addition to the talent itself, uh, which could also obviously include a photographer. Uh, you then could have things like stock photographs, stock images that you're incorporating into your marketing content. You could have, if you're doing location photo shoots, you might have a location release from the location that puts additional restrictions on what you can do with that particular photo. Uh, you might have other brands, brand partners that you're incorporating into your <clears throat> marketing that have different uh, restrictions that they're going to put on on how you can use your content and then if you're doing video that just ratchets up the complexity uh, to a whole nother order because then you add in things like music voiceover um, and the licenses that go along with those things can further complicate that so when you layer this all on top of that one image or video 
you know, you could have up to, you know, 10 or more different agreements in play for one single image or even one frame of video. Um, and that becomes very hard for a human being to be able to um, decipher that and understand what they can do with that asset. And in fact, it becomes difficult as well for the organization to even be able to capture all that detail because they need a place to be able to capture the specificity that goes for each particular talent or each particular licensor that they're working with and the various granular definitions of those rights that go along with those agreements. And that's really where Rights Cloud comes into play. And I'm going to show you how we do that um, in Rights Cloud uh, here in the system. So Rights Cloud is a cloud-based a rights management system that gives you a place to store all of the agreements that you have that is tied to content that you're creating or licensing um, and be able to capture all those different details that you saw on the previous slide. Um, and the uh, it, it also enables you to store all the actual talent or different companies that you're working with. So if I take a look, for example, at my kind of Rolodex here in Rights Cloud, I can see that I've got a bunch of different uh, talent that I'm working with. I've got location uh, scouts that I'm working with. I've got uh, stock houses like Shutterstock or Getty that I'm working with. I've got photographers or videographers that I'm working with. And each one of them can be stored in the system here with some details about, about that individual or that company. So if I click into our photographer here, Steve Weston, I can see some information about Steve here. Um, and I can see some details about Steve, what he is. He's a photographer as well as a videographer. I can store my contact information for Steve. So if I need to reach out to Steve, I have all the information at my fingertips here. I can store things like social links for Steve's Instagram, his Twitter, his Facebook, and I can even attach in a resume or a CV or something like that um, into this record for Steve. So I have kind of a single source of truth for all the folks that I'm licensing content from or producing content with here. Um, and then I can capture agreements that I have with this particular individual or, or organization. Uh, so if I go under the agreements here for Steve, I can see that I have a talent agreement with Steve Weston here. Um, and if I click through to that actual agreement, now I can see some details about the actual agreement that I have with Steve. Um, and some high level details here, such as what type is it? This is a talent agreement, so it might be talent, it might be stock photography, it might be location release, as I was saying, different types of agreements, uh, variations that you can store in the system. Um, and then typically high level information includes when did I execute this contract with Steve? What's the start date? And is there an end date associated with it? Um, as an agreement. Um, and then most importantly, what are the rights that are associated with this agreement? Um, now we're storing the details kind of from a data perspective and the rights from a data perspective. You can also attach in the actual physical contract, but what I'm more interested in from a data perspective and from enabling the organization with rights visibility is what are the actual rights and how am I gonna capture those actual rights here? And we do that by providing a hierarchy of rights definitions in the system that can be very granular and be, can be grouped um, and categorized under different territories and different uses for that content. So I can see here on Steve's agreement, Steve has given us some digital rights and those digital rights are for Europe and North America. And the different use that I can use digitally is broadcast, digital or social media. Um, and that's for the length of my agreement, which is you know roughly a, a little over, uh, uh, roughly a year or so period that I have those rights. Um, and then in addition, I have different print rights. So Steve has said, you can do certain things with it digitally. You can do other things with it for print. The print rights are limited to Europe. Maybe he has other agreements or associations, so he doesn't want that to be able to be printed in North America. So, but Europe's open, so I, he gives us the rights to, to use those images in print or direct marketing or, or out of home campaigns in Europe uh, for a specific time frame. So you can start to already see a little complexity here, but these, in fact, we keep it simple for purposes of the demo so you can kind of understand how it works. But even one agreement could be very complex. Um, and could have multiple windows, multiple timeframes, blackout windows, different territories, different uses. So Rights Cloud gives you a place to capture all that data and get as granular as you need to, to be able to understand precisely what 
a particular talent or licensor is allowing you to do with those rights. Now, how does that translate over to the assets themselves? Well, now that I've got Steve, I've captured that I've done an agreement with Steve Weston, my photographer. Now I can, as assets come in from that photo shoot to my dam system, I can connect that, that up to Rights Cloud, and those assets that are coming from the photo shoot into my dam can automatically flow into Rights Cloud and be associated to this agreement, therefore inheriting the rights from this agreement to the asset so that I know what I can do with that particular asset that was generated from a photo shoot associated with this agreement. So I have a few of those that have already come into Rights Cloud. So if I switch over to the assets tab here for this particular agreement, I can see all the assets that have come in from the dam system and have been attached to this agreement. So here's a photo that Steve took at the photo shoot. It's ingested through my dam. The dam makes an API call to Rights Cloud. It creates a record for this. It tells us which agreement to attach it to. It gets attached to Steve's agreement. And now the rights from Steve's agreement will be inherited onto this asset. So if I click through to this asset itself and look at the asset record, um, I can see the thumbnail of the asset here. I can see some high level information about the asset. What's important is the external ID, which is the dam ID. So that links us back to that asset in the dam system and in the flow that we're gonna see in CI Hub in a, in a moment. Um, so it all stays linked together. Uh, and for this particular asset, now if I go and look at the agreements that are tied to this asset, I can see that it's tied to the Steve Weston photographer agreement. I can also see that it's tied to Molly Models agreement. She's the model in the photo. So now you can start to see how you can have those multiple agreements all attached to a single asset and each agreement has its own particular detailed rights that become attached to this asset. So if I look at the contributors, I can easily see for any asset who are all the talent and contributors contributing to it. And if I look at the rights, I can see from each of those contributors, what are the rights we're getting? So here's the rights from Steve that we saw in the agreement for digital broadcast and social media in North America and Europe and the print rights that we had for Europe for direct marketing out of home and print. Um, and the date range is available for those. And we can see now it's layered on Molly Models Agreement as well. She happened to give us all territories and all uses, so a very broad license, but that still has to be taken into account on this asset. So, so you have your kind of your talent, your party, you have the agreement for the talent, and then you have the asset that's attached to the agreement. And when you connect that all up, you end up with a really good holistic view of all the rights that are associated with this particular asset. So now that I've got that, I can now expose that information back through my dam or through CI Hub into my Adobe uh, Creative um, Cloud tools so that I can, while I'm creating content, I can instantly get visibility into this. And what Rights Cloud does is employs a, a sophisticated engine that will look at all those agreements and you ask it, can I do X, Y, or Z with this asset? And it will look at all those agreements, check all the rights, and give you back an answer of yes, no, or maybe you can do what you're trying to do based on all these agreements that you've got attached to the asset. And so that's the power of capturing the detail in granularly and then exposing it through the rights cloud connectivity through CI Hub into the creative tools. So I'm gonna bring now our head marketeer onto the call, Debbie Gupta, and she's gonna show you uh, in her creative marketing tools where she creates her marketing content, how um, this, tool provides the um, value of exposing the rights clearance uh, while she's working without her having to stop at all to call somebody or look in a filing cabinet or figure out what the rights are for the assets. So Debbie, thanks for joining us today. Take it away. Thanks, Greg. Um, so as Greg mentioned, Greg invited me onto the call because I'm part of the marketing department here at Fidel. Um, and I leverage the various tools and marketing technology um, that's out there. And many of you are also part of marketing teams or, your, uh, or you have marketing organizations that uh, heavily leverage Adobe Creative Cloud as well as the Microsoft Office 365 suite. Um, so I have here um, Adobe InDesign and I'm working on creating a, a brochure for my uh, winter catalog. Um, and I wanted to show you how easy it is to, first of all, to uh, install or uh, expose CI Hub within your environment. So it's really easy to find the CI Hub extension within the Adobe Exchange. 
Um, and then once you have that installed, you can come over to extensions and sort of install the panel um, for access within all of your Adobe Creative Cloud tools. So over here on the right-hand side, we have our CI Hub panel. One of the coolest things about the CI Hub panel is that it brings together all of your asset repositories and all of your assets within this single environment so that you don't have to you know, search through, jump over to different uh, systems in order to gain access to the assets you're allowed to use. Now, here we have different types of connections that can be established to different types of repositories. So for instance, you have many different uh, DAM systems. We have a uh, binder, Cloudinary, WebDAM, a Primo, Widen, you know, quite a few different systems. Why don't I show you connecting to one of them? I'm going to connect over here to a Primo. Um, and once that connection is established, you can see over here, I now have a connection established to a Primo, and I can navigate over to my Primo assets. But you also have access to other types of asset repositories, such as your stock sites like Adobe Stock, Shutterstock, Getty Images. You have access to your various uh, storage sites and, and drives like Dropbox and Google Drive and OneDrive, um, et cetera. So it's really powerful. You can gain access to, to pretty much everything. Now, um, you know, over here, I'm going to navigate in and start looking at some of the assets I have. Now, the assets from the Steve Weston photo shoot are actually stored in our a Primo uh, digital asset management system. So over here you can see I've navigated into the, the winter collection of photo shoot assets that Greg was looking at within Rights Cloud. Um, but before I get started using these, as I'm working on my, um, my marketing piece, I have to be really careful about whether or not I actually have the rights to use these. You know, just because they're visible to me and avail and and you know. Uh, available to me doesn't mean that I actually have the rights to use them against the distribution plan or campaign terms. So that's the power of bringing in the rights cloud connectivity within the CI Hub panel and within the Adobe Creative Cloud suite. We have this capability over here to check rights. So I'm going to click on that and I'm going to say um, perhaps my campaign terms, let's just check for the rest of the year, we'll go ahead and check um, across, why don't I do all of Europe? And I'm going to go ahead and check across a uh, digital marketing campaign, uh, maybe as well social media. So if I go ahead and do that check, let's see what, uh, what results come back. And right now it's doing a call over to Rights Cloud to say, do I have the rights to use these assets? against those campaign terms that I just defined. And as you can see, you get these visual indicators that tell you whether you have the rights to use the asset or not. So the, the green ones obviously are telling us that they're available for use. The red, red ones are not available for use, and that's either because I don't have the correct set of rights or because perhaps that contract or that asset has expired. Um, and then we have our yellow ones that say that they're partially available. So why are they partially available? Let's let's kind of dig into that. So if I go and drill into the details of this asset, I see that it is available in Europe and, and in digital and social media. However, it's not available for the last quarter of the year. So that's okay, I'm working on getting this piece out the door, You know, let's say uh, by the end of summer. Um, so why don't I go ahead and change my date range? I'm going to just search on it through the end of summer and see if I have permission to use these assets um, for at least that time period. And as you can see, that instantly changed to green because within those terms, I'm allowed to use these assets. So now I'm going to start the creative process. Um, I have to make sure that I only use the assets that are marked as green, the ones that are available for my use. So I'll go ahead and, and grab the hat asset that I was just looking at. I'll go ahead and grab um, you know, another green asset that's available to me. So that's great, um, but I do recall that I have some additional assets that are stored in my Dropbox system that would be perfect for this piece. You know, I want some sweater assets that demonstrate sweaters or show, show off sweaters, and I have them stored in Dropbox. 
So here I'm looking at my company's Dropbox uh, set of folders. I have a winter wear folder, so let's go look. And as you can see, I have a bunch of assets to choose from that would look really nice in my, uh, in my piece. However, once again, do I have the rights to use them? So let's go ahead and check our rights. We have the same campaign criteria set up. And as you can see, this one asset does not have the proper rights. And these other assets are, appear to be inactive. And that's because the asset is not registered within Rights Cloud. Now, with the power of CI Hub and the integration to Rights Cloud, there is a capability to take your asset and actually register it directly within Rights Cloud. So I've decided I'm going to use this particular asset in my piece. Um, let's go ahead and register that file within Rights Cloud. As you can see, I got a successful message, so you know that looks good. Um, but why don't we have Greg check the system and um, see if we have uh, see if it shows up in Rights Cloud. So I'm going to give permission over to Greg to to show you Rights Cloud. Okay, thanks, Debbie. Cool stuff for sure going on in CI Hub. Um, and as you showed, um, in some cases you might be connected to a dam where those assets are coming over and are registered automatically, as I was saying, into Rights Cloud. Um, but one of the powerful things about CI Hub is that it gives you visibility uh, and access to assets from all your asset sources that you might be using. And so in your example, again, you had some assets in Dropbox. Um, they were not in Rights Cloud uh, as you were accessing them. So you had that ability then to say, well, let's register this in Rights Cloud and capture the rights so I can make sure I can use it. Um, and that might be a process where you, you know the rights and you're capturing them, or it might be a process or a workflow where somebody else needs to update the rights on that asset in order for you to be able to get the visibility in it. But you'll be able to trigger that by sending that asset over to Rights Cloud, and then the rights can be applied within Rights Cloud. So, um, and again, that's done automatically through the API connection between CI Hub and Rights Cloud. So if I go to my asset list in Rights Cloud now, I will see that there's the image that's been sent over um, from uh, from CI Hub and registered by Debbie into Rights Cloud, and here it is. And there's a there's a, a an asset record now for it here, but I'll see that it doesn't have any rights, so it needs to have the rights stored and captured onto it. And that's very easy to do. I can attach it to an agreement, like you saw me show in in the first part of the Rights Cloud demo, or I can simply tag an asset directly with rights if I want to, and that's very easy too. I can come in here and I can say, okay. I'm going to tag this image. We have the rights for it, let's say, um, for all of 2021. So from January 1st, 2021 through to uh, December 31st, 2021. Um, and let's say we have all territories here. Um, and then we have um, digital. Um, and uh, and if I want to get more granular with those, I can. Um, digital is is you know a a top level. I'm saying basically all digital rights. But if I wanted to get more specific about specific digital rights, I could do that as well. Um, but I'm going to say all digital rights and um, all social media rights. And then I can just store that information. And now I have that those rights captured on that asset right here in Rights Cloud. So now that the beauty of the integration again is that is that that information now is immediately visible to anywhere that's connected to Rights Cloud in your organization, uh, whether it's your DAM, whether it's your creative tools through CI Hub, um, whether it's you know your PIM or some other some other system, uh, your workflow system, you can have visibility into that data instantly without having to go into those systems and update a piece of metadata, for example, to keep it in sync with the rights. You, you store it all in one place, you update it in one place, and then it becomes immediately visible um, back to um, Devi in CI Hub. So I'm gonna turn it back over to Devi now, um, and she's gonna be able to check the rights on that image now that it's been saved, and she will be able to um, get an answer uh, on that asset. Okay, thanks, Greg. Um, so here you can see our asset, it's, it's still um, marked as red. Let's go ahead and click on check rights again now that Greg's assigned some rights to those and see what happens. Great.
So now you can see that the asset has given us the visual indicator that it's green, that it's now available for use. So that's fantastic. I'm gonna go ahead and drop this into my piece. Um, another really cool capability within CI Hub is that I can also, you know, in addition to dropping assets, graphical assets like this into my, um, into my, my catalog or my brochure, I can also drop metadata. So let's, let's drill into this piece and see if we have any kind of metadata that we could leverage um, as some of our text. So we have this caption here, Accessorizer Kashmir. Um, I'm gonna just drop that into my piece. That's great. Um, why don't we go ahead and look at our Primo assets and see if we have any kind of um, information that we can leverage there. I'm gonna look at the hat image. So let's go back to the hat image scroll down you can see we have a an ai description and some ai tags that just at least gives us a starting point and then we can kind of clean it up from there so i'm going to drag that onto there maybe drag some of these um, text tags onto there and I'll, I'll work on cleaning it up so fast forward now a couple days i've worked on this piece i've finished up all of my text i've added my logos um, I've proofed it, et cetera, and now I'm pretty much ready to turn it over to my creative director for final approval and distribution. However, as part of my best practice and as, as part of the company's um, set of governance rules, it's critical that I first check to make sure that I, um, cause I, I have the right rights for everything that I've leveraged, because in the meantime, contracts could have changed, assets could have expired, something could be out of date. So let's go ahead and look at our final piece. And here we're now, we've switched into a view now where we can see our final piece and all the links that are associated with it. And once again, I'm going to go ahead and do a final check of my rights. And so let's see what we get back. And we get back a green available um, response on all of those. We get back some information, uh, you know, interesting detail, and we're essentially good to go. And so that is kind of the, that's the conclusion of the demonstration part of this. Um, but I just want to summarize for you. So what we've basically been able to show you is the power of gaining visibility into not only the assets and the metadata, but also the rights to use those assets within your system or within your final um, set of deliverables that you're going to uh, deliver to market. So over here we have, um, you know, a screenshot of, of what I just showed you within InDesign. Um, and, uh, and yeah, that's, that's kind of the power of, your of leveraging the information within your creative tools. Really, really awesome stuff, Debbie. Um, I love that instant feedback that you get on the rights while you're creating your content. You know, for Rights Cloud, our whole mission is to, is to have you have the user not have to leave the tools that they're working in all day long to get to rights information. So seeing that information captured in rights cloud and then exposed in that way through CI Hub uh, is really right on target for for what we try to the value that we try to provide from a rights management perspective. So thanks for sharing that with us. I notice on your slide you have the InDesign, um, but you also have is that PowerPoint that I'm looking at there on the on the other screenshot, and so. It, it also integrates with PowerPoint if I'm working in PowerPoint? That's correct. So the um, for the demonstration, we were focusing on the Adobe Creative Cloud Suite, but of course, many marketing organizations also use um, the Microsoft Office 365 set of tools. So we have a screenshot of PowerPoint. I, since I'm actually in PowerPoint right now, I'll just go ahead and quickly show it to you. Um, so I'm flipping into, obviously, you know, exposing behind the scenes. I'm flipping into um, edit mode within PowerPoint. I have my CI Hub panel that's available to me and installed into the system. Here's my panel. As you can see, here are the connections that we were looking at before, Adobe Stock, Shutterstock, Dropbox. Um, and we have, I'm going to navigate into here are the folders for Dropbox. Here's the winterware folder we were just looking at. But right now I'm working on a presentation. So if I look at my presentation assets folder, you can see that some of these are the assets that are actually here. And if I were to go ahead and check the rights to use these assets, you can see that they all have a green. So I'm not using anything that I, that I shouldn't be using.
so yeah that it's it's powerful it's really kind of cool how you can instantly use the same capability within all of your microsoft tools as well it is that is really nifty and as a rights management company um you know it's important that we make sure we have the rights to everything we're using in our presentation so so i'm yeah. glad you i'm glad you ran that check and got all, all green for that um uh so very cool very cool and i think you know another interesting thing is so not only do you have visibility into those rights from within all those tools um that's really going to allow you to you know create your content quickly and and today more than ever getting digital content out rapidly is so important um to and there's so many different ways that that content is getting distributed and you're moving so fast that it's really important to stay compliant as well as being fast so you, it's not enough to just be quick you got to be quick but you got to make sure you don't you're not hasty um and that you don't end up putting yourself in a legal or a brand position where you've either represented your brand with assets that have restrictions on them that you shouldn't be using in certain ways or you've um, you've broken an agreement that you had with talent or a licensor and used used their um, their at their image or their asset in a way that that you shouldn't use it. So not only do you get that visibility that allows you to do that, but was what was interesting in the demo too was you actually also facilitated through the CI Hub connection the ability to help capture those rights by registering those assets into Rights Cloud through CI Hub. So so you have kind of the whole package from being able to capture the rights. Uh, store the rights in Rights Cloud, expose them through the connector to your creative tools so that you don't have to stop at all. No roadblocks when you're creating content. Again, in mo mo many cases, people have to stop and pick up the phone and call somebody down the hall with, do we have the rights to this? Or they have to try to dig out a release or a contract. Um, so as long as you capture that detail in Rights Cloud, uh, now you don't have to stop when you're working in, a, in Adobe or, or uh, the Microsoft tools. So very, very cool stuff, Debbie. Thanks for sharing that with us today. This is really amazing, Debbie. Craig, that's um, I'm I'm <laughs> always I see that I'm blown away. That's that's really, really amazing. Um, coming back to that slide, um, uh, everything what uh, Debbie and Greg showed you um, is actually available in all of these integrations, and that's almost no no additional effort for you as as Debbie showed you create a connection to your photoware system you register your photoware assets into the rights cloud and you're good to go it's this is this is our belief on how simple assets and information at your fingertips should be um, installation should be easy the services should be uh, working across all of your systems you're needing uh, training should be minimum. Uh, this is really what's our goal as CI Hub to deliver clever functionalities on top of all of these connections. Um, and I'm really proud that uh, we had the chance to integrate FEDL as, as a first service on top of all of these connections. So, Debbie, Greg, really th thank you. Thank you for that one. That's pretty amazing. And as you expected, um, CI Hub is very efficient, and that's what we are with our webinars. I think uh, we we have now um, 540. We have enough time for all of your all of your questions. We'd be really happy to take as lot of questions as we can. Uh, meanwhile, um, here is a, a. Could you go one back? I just want. To, yeah. Um, here is it. Easy it is to try what we've showed you yourself. Uh, create your CI Hub, uh, download your Adobe or your Microsoft um, plugin. Uh, go to Fidel. Um, you can use the Community Edition, register there. Um, the Community Edition is a free version and everything what we've showed you is right at your fingertips. Just start that. You can scan that QR code. It will bring you to a prepared page uh, on our website uh, where you find more information and uh, we are all here if you have any any questions any uh, any further requests we're really happy to support you with that that said we would be more than happy to answer all of your questions and uh, I think we can just start let me yep isn't that cool? 
Now you see us? So. Great. Hey Greg, good to see you. Hey, cool. <laughs> so. Um, Our, all let's right. Start so, with questions. yeah, this is so, um, Greg. And Andreas, fantastic. Uh, thank you for the presentation. Um, and thank you for inviting me back on to uh, ask questions. Absolutely. We have a ton of questions. It's great. Um, so our first question here is a good one. I think it's for Greg. Is all of that information under rights customizable? We shy away from using digital because it tends to be too generic. Greg, I think you're on mute. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, great question. Um, uh, you could see me, but you couldn't hear me now. <laughs> so, um, uh, good question. I think um, you saw there in the demo um, that I went in to um, add the rights to the at Dropbox asset. You could see that I dropped down digital uh, and you could see that there were there were more granular levels. So the rights are a hierarchy. So you, you can define that. It's totally customizable. We have we have a list that sh that is out of the box with the product and it's pretty comprehensive. So it covers a lot of those details under digital that you might have, um, but it's customizable. Uh, any any customer can customize it to their own uh, channels that they use or what they call those channels. Um, and, and you can have as many levels as you want. So I happen to be using digital, uh, kind of saying all digital rights, but as you saw when I drilled down into that, that was you know brand website, um, uh, uh, you know, e-commerce, different digital rights, and the social media as well. If you drill down, you can get as granular as Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and so that can all be defined in the system. Okay, our next question is, I'm interested in reporting capabilities. For example, is it possible to provide a report showing assets by market or region that will be expiring in the next 90 days? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. From a rights cloud perspective, there's um, we didn't show it in the demo today, but there's a whole reporting area that has numerous reports that allow you to look at your agreements, when agreements are expiring, when assets are expiring, um, different information about the the parties that you're working with, um, different usage information about what what assets are being most cleared, um, what assets are being most requested. Uh, what assets are being most utilized. So a lot of reporting that you can get out of the system and you can subscribe to many of those reports and get them delivered you know, on a weekly basis in your in your inbox to see what's expiring um, that week, that month, et cetera. Another very cool thing in Rights Cloud, which we didn't go into today, is, is something called content tracking, where we actually look at sites where you post your images to or publish your images to and track images that you've published to make sure that they've come down if they have expired. So, so to make sure you don't put something up on Facebook, it has an expiration date, nobody takes it down, um, and then you know the engine will actually say, hey, there's an image on Facebook that you posted that you're tracking rights for in Rights Cloud, and it's um, 30 days away from its expiration date, or it has already expired. You don't want to get to the point where it's already expired because then you're already liable, but it'll warn you ahead of that. So several different ways you can get that information. Yes, good question, thank you. Okay, great. The next question is for Andy. Um, is Adobe XD supported? And also, could you to, could you tell us again? You know, what are all the Adobe products that are supported? Yeah, sure. So um, Adobe XD will be supported in the same way as we would support Figma and I always forget the little Sketch. I don't have it. And uh, already supported is InDesign, Photoshop. Illustrator, InCopy, uh, Premiere Pro, and After Effects on the Adobe side, and PowerPoint, Word, Excel, and Outlook on the Microsoft side. Uh, in, in, in regards to the storages, it's already a SharePoint, a OneDrive, um, and, and many others. Uh, you will see more of these informations actually on our website uh, on, uh, at integrations, so take a look. And we, all were, we also will update the list of, we call it families, which we support. So you will get that too. Great, thank you. Um, the next question I think would be good for maybe both of you. Um, how is the association between the rights cloud asset and the stored asset managed? 
And I personally might add to that, you know, I, I guess there's sort of the asset that's in your digital asset management system, the asset view that's within a C, the CI Hub panel within Creative Cloud or the Creative Tools, and the asset registration that's in um, Rights Cloud. So maybe, um, you know, Greg and Andy, you can both speak to that association. Yeah. yeah. Go you, ahead, Andy. Okay. okay. So, so it's, it's, Rights it's, Cloud. It's actually, it's a, yeah. <laughs> now it's your turn. <laughs> From a rights cloud perspective, it's all about the ID that I showed in the demo, the a asset external ID. So that external ID, um, in, for example, in the Aprimo case that we were showing, when that asset comes into a Primo into the dam, or, or any dam for that matter, typically it has an ID in the dam. So that's the dam ID or the external reference ID, we call it. That ID, when that asset is then registered into Rights Cloud, we're storing that ID with it. And that's the same ID that CI Hub is using to identify that image so that the circle is complete. Yeah. So we're all talking about the same image, no matter where you're looking at it from, the dam, Rights Cloud, or CI Hub you're talking about that same ID and that's really how we link it up. Yeah. Okay, great, great, thank you. Um, sure. ne next question, looks great for images. Um, can you talk, can you talk uh, to how you handle video? Yeah, sure, absolutely. Um, when we get this question a lot um, and Video is just another asset, so there's multiple ways you can store that depending upon how you want to capture the rights for that piece of video. Um, you can say, I have a piece of video, here it is, and I know what the rights are, and I'm going to capture the rights for that piece of video. That would be kind of at the high level. Um, or you can actually capture the individual pieces of that video as assets on their, on their own. Um, so you might have either different clips that are edited together, you might have a piece of music, you might have a voiceover, those can all be stored as separate assets and then grouped into a group that represents the edited video. So that's if you wanna go a, a level down. And that how you do that is really based on how, um, you know, how you wanna identify rights or reuse that content. So if you're reusing that content at the component level, then it makes sense to try and capture it at the component level so you can see, can I reuse this particular piece or this particular voiceover in another campaign or in another piece of content? Um, otherwise, it works the same way. Whatever that lowest level asset is, whether it's a song, whether it's a voiceover, whether it's um, a, a clip of a video with two models in it, um, it still gets attached to the agreements for whoever the licensors are, whoever are the content rights owners, for that particular asset. So in, the, in a clip of two models, you still might have you know, an agreement for model one, an agreement for model two, and a producer agreement maybe attached to that. Then you might put a song on top of that, and then you have a song, which maybe has a songwriter and a performer agreement attached to that. Um, and then again, when you group those two things together, you can say, okay, as a whole, what can I do with this piece of video? Or you can look at those individual elements. So that, that's how it works with video, very similarly to images. And just just to add to that, this is the, the beauty of, of of supporting the cross platform. So everything what Devi showed you in InDesign works the same in After Effects or in Premiere or in Illustrator. And uh, if you're in Premiere or in After Effects, the check of the assets would just happen within the timeline. So if you have in your timeline uh, assets, a video or an or an image. You would get the same information on the rights back um, as you saw it in InDesign. Thank you. Um, I believe this question is for, um, let's see, sorry I lost my place for, for Andy perhaps. If an asset is yeah. red, um, yeah. can a designer still link it in the design file? Yes. In the moment, uh, there is no further um, restriction as the information. So in the moment, we give the designer all the information he needs to have to do an educated decision. But if he decides to place an asset in his creative work, which is not available from, from maybe the rights management, he can still place it because maybe he already know that someone else is already negotiating the contract and before he will release the final artwork, that, that asset right will be fixed. 
So we do not put any restriction on the use in that one. Um, we've, we've, we've discussed that, but we don't really find this is a help for the user. Um, you could have something like that, but uh, in a moment, people are really happy to have the information, but continue the work. So, um, uh, yeah, that's, that's the answer to that. Okay, great. Um, let's see, next question is, it's to Greg and there are multiple questions, so I'll sort of paraphrase the multiple questions. Um, could you speak a little bit to how information um, can be stored within the rights cloud system? For instance, where are the contracts stored or how do you get, how do you extract rights information uh, from contracts into the system? Um, do you, you know, do you necessarily, what, what types of staff do you need or do you need to hire additional staff? Um, and then part two to that, I would say, is this other question about, um, you know, are, are there ways to sort of make the, the contractual signing process of getting releases, you know, easier and, and into the system? Yeah, good questions. We we get a lot of questions about this part of the process, the kind of the capture capturing the rights, because that can sometimes be a challenge. Yeah, the the tool works great when you have the rights captured in it, um, but you have to capture those rights in it in order to provide that visibility. There's numerous ways that contracts can get into the system. Technically speaking, they can be entered by a person. Um, they can come in via an API from an external system if you're st already storing the details in a contract system, a contract management system, they can be connected up through an API, or they can come in in a bulk upload in kind of a spreadsheet format as well, um, can come in and, and be uploaded into the system that way. Um, so there's multiple technical approaches to how they can come in. But a lot of times it's a process question, right? So you, you have to have a process around that ability to capture it. And it's very easy, any of those ways are very easy to get the data into Rights Cloud, and we don't require a lot of data around the contracts. Again, it's very minimal header data that needs to be entered, and then the rights data itself is the most important thing. We're not looking for the legal clauses or the contract itself, although again, you can attach the document into the system, but, um, but there's just very minimal data that we need to capture on it. Uh, but it does need to be captured. So typically that's either part of the business management flow of, of business management who's doing, or, or talent management that's working with the talent. Um, it could be a legal function of the people who are doing the agreements. It could also be related to an agency. If an agency is getting your releases and things like that for your content, they might be the ones responsible for entering that in. Um, so it's really a, a process that you'll need to look at and define and streamline to make sure that the, the kind of the best practice is to make sure that you're capturing that information as early as you can at the time that that agreement is created or, or executed so that it's already captured by the time you're producing content and by the time you're going to a photo shoot or a video shoot and you've got the assets coming in, that's the worst time to have to then go back and figure out the rights. Better to capture the rights up front in the process. Um, and there's usually somebody that's equipped to do that in the organization. So it's not always that you need to necessarily hire somebody to do that. There's probably somebody that it's it already should be their responsibility to capture that release or that agreement. And adding it into the database is one extra step, which again can be kind of automated in a number of ways. Thanks, Hope Greg. Um, yep, and we it looks like we have about three more questions. They're all great. Um, next question is, can you track can you track all of the publications or usage of photos that are currently active? Can you then identify for one image with rights expiring, which publications should be removed? Okay, let me, let me answer that. <clears throat> In general, uh, that depends on the system you're connected to. Uh, uh, the CIR panel can deliver what we call a cross-reference so, meaning when you upload a an, an, an template, so an InDesign file, then we can give the information of what are the assets within that InDesign file to the DEM system. And then you have all these informations in your DEM system and you can query, tell me all documents where this asset is used and because this asset is expiring. So, uh, it's, a, it's a yes and a no. Yes, it's capable to do it, but it depends if your backend system or your DEM system is supporting that. 
Yeah, I would add to that. I mentioned earlier, um, Rights Cloud also has a tool, tool called Content Tracking, which can look at a particular site where you publish your content, like for example, your brand website um, or your Facebook feed, or as well as um, <clears throat> partner sites like suppliers or trade partners that you might be working with um, that that you that publish your content to their site. You can set up the content tracking tool to actually keep an eye on those sites. And when an image is published there that you're tracking in Rights Cloud, it will notify you that we found this image on this site, it's published, and this particular image either doesn't have, you know, has the rights or doesn't have the right to be used on that particular channel, like a website or Facebook, and as well the expiration of that. So it will warn you again, you have an image that's here that's been published um that uh that that may be expiring soon and you may want to pull that down so that's another a tool in rights cloud we didn't see it today but that's something that can help with um with with that issue and with uh the question about you know can i protect it from um from partner sites or, or people that i give my content to to publish well yes. actually jumping off of that another question and I, and i lied by the way there are more than there, there are more <laughs> they're questions still coming, coming in, in. Yes. Yeah, they're still coming it's, in so another question that's sort of related to what you just said is, does the software allow us to protect the images from being used by others if we've shared with a supplier or trade partner? We share images with partners, but want to be protected by the embargo of product launch dates. So I think you just kind of answered that question, right, Greg? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's kind of what I meant, is that the, the, to the extent that you know where your partner is using that content, we do have some tools that can look at that content. The other way you know, would be similar along the lines of what Andy was saying, which is that um, everything in Rights Cloud is an open API. So you, you can integrate it with many other systems. So if you're working with a distribution system, um that you're using like a sprinkler or something like that where you're where you're um you're, you're distributing your images through a tool like that you can get visibility into it from there as well and look at things like expiration dates or rights clearance as well uh, the content tracking in rights cloud is kind of a post-production tool so once you've produced your content and you've published it then content tracking kind of does its job of just keeping an eye on places where that content might be distributed and telling you if it's a violation or not at that point Thank you. Um, okay. Um, another question. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Andy. Yeah. No, I, I think we have time for two more questions. Um, and okay. I think there was a question about the Adobe brand portal. Yeah. Um, this is not supported yet. Um, but if there is a request to do that, just just let us know. And there's another question. Are you are you integrating with enterprise content management systems? Yes, this is definitely something we have on the plan for that year. You will see the same functionality for your Drupal and WordPress and, and all of the uh, content management and website management systems as well. Yeah. Great. And I'd also add that there is integration of, of doing a rights check from uh, Adobe Experience Manager as well, so Adobe Assets. Yeah. This is um, yeah. This is yeah. this is through you purely. That's that's integrated in Fidel, not not in CI Hub in the moment. Right. There's actually one last question which I really love. Yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this look this looks so easy, but it's always does it in a demo environment. The amazing thing is to all of you, um, and maybe we we just click to the next slide. Um, it's not. It's just. It's not just looking easy. Yeah, it is easy. Go to your Adobe store, download the CI panel, uh, register at Fidel for the community edition, connect to whatever damn system you want, and try it yourself. I would assume it will take you about 10 minutes, and you could do the same demo we did to all of your colleagues and uh, show them the capabilities of that. That's our daily goal to make it really simple, yeah, without yeah, weeks of consultancy and and complex implementations. Just try it. Everything what we showed you today will, will work the same. Really easy. And I can attest to that because I, I'm not part of the development team. I'm part of the marketing team within Fidel and I set up access to my, uh, my digital asset management systems, Adobe Creative Cloud, the Microsoft tools all, you know, to show you everything live today. 
Great job, Debbie. Thanks for doing all that too. Really, really, really amazing how you prepared that demo. It's really cool. Yeah. So Thank forgot you. to mention uh, the the uh, CI panel. You get a 30 day free trial, so it's risk free for you to try that and uh, build your own demo with whatever you've seen as an inspiration today. Really great. I think we're we're at the end. Um, Thanks a lot to everybody um, taking the time uh, listening to us. Uh, the recording will be uh, on our website too, and all of the questions will be answered from us, and they will also be on our website. So uh, just just go ahead, take a look there uh, tomorrow, and you will see all of the you will see all the questions and all the answers. It really was a pleasure, um, Debbie, Greg. That was amazing uh, to have the opportunity to present that with you. Really great. Um, the product's actually released, so we're not showing you some pre-release stuff. It's it's just there. Just go and use it. Uh, and to the Henry Stewarts, thanks a lot for giving us the opportunity to use the Henry Stewart events and present our ideas and product. Great. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.